Hi, it's Dwyer, DwyerVIP.com. Thanks for stopping by. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. I'm not buying Game 4 of the NBA Finals. Because of Game 4, in which the Miami Heat won 109-93, to curiously, the San Antonio Spurs are underdogs in Game 5 at home. I like the San Antonio Spurs here. I believe they deliver compelling value in Game 5. Let's talk about the reasons why. First, the win in Game 4 wasn't as comprehensive as you think. For example, even though Dwayne Wade had a simply spectacular game, scoring 32 points, shooting better than 50%, right? He hit 14 of 25 shots. So you understand that's really an outlier game for Wade, who isn't that great a shooter. <coughs> but even with all of that accomplishment, it might surprise you to know that when Dwayne Wade was on the floor, the Miami Heat only outscored the Spurs by five points. That's with Dwayne Wade having a great game. In fact, if you look at the box score and look closely at the plus minus, you're going to see that where Miami really made headway wasn't with the starters. It was actually with the bench. It was with Ray Allen, Norris Cole, Udonis Haslam, and Shane Battier on the floor. Let's talk about the numbers. With Dwayne Wade, the plus minus was a plus five. With Mario Chambers, it's a plus five. With Chris Bosh, it's a plus six. LeBron's a plus eight. Mike Miller, a plus five. Right? That's the plus minus for the starters. Miami's bench, by contrast. Ray Allen had a plus minus of plus 19. Norris Cole, believe it or not, had a plus minus of plus nine, more than LeBron's plus eight. Udonis Haslam had a plus-minus of plus 10. Shane Battier had a plus-minus of plus 13, right? And so don't be mesmerized by press reports of how the big three dominated this game. They didn't because San Antonio got more dominated and was more troubled, quite frankly, by Miami's bench. Also, there are certain things that happened in this game that I don't believe are likely to happen in game five, right? For one, Miami shooting percentage. It was an absurd 52.9% in game four. In other words, whoever put up a shot for the Miami Heat, that shot had a greater than 50% chance of going in. This team simply can't maintain that shooting percentage. Right? They were fortunate, quite frankly, to hit that high a percentage of their shots, especially when not too many guys were driving to the basket. We know that just by the free throw numbers. Understand, Dwayne Wade only took four free throws the entire game. Chris Bosh only took four free throws the entire game. These guys were hitting... Outside shots. LeBron James, by the way, same thing. Only took four free throws the entire game. By contrast, Tim Duncan took ten. In other words, the Heat were hoisting outside shots and were hitting them at greater than a 50% rate. Let's also talk about turnovers. Now understand that while no spur turned over the ball, more than three times. Think about that. No spur turned over the ball more than three times, but yet the team turned over the ball 18 times. Why? Because several guys on the Spurs turned over the ball three times. Tony Parker, Tiago Splitter, Tim Duncan all turned over the ball three times. Now contrast that with the Miami Heat. People need to realize that the Heat as a team only had one guy in game four who turned over the ball more than once. 
and that was Mario Chalmers who turned it over four times, right? Nobody else on the entire Heat team turned over the ball even two times. You cannot expect that to continue. You simply cannot. Miami is going to have more turnovers in Game 5 than they did in Game 4. Right? Let me also say, too, that the game was closer than it seemed. Understand it's true that San Antonio did not outscore the Miami Heat in any quarter other than the second quarter in this game. Right? But let's, let's look at it. At the end of the first half, the score was even. Miami outscored San Antonio by three in the first quarter. San Antonio outscored Miami by three in the second quarter. So you have a dead even game. Third quarter starts. The Heat open up a five point lead at the end of the third quarter. Understand the game doesn't get out of hand until several minutes have passed in the fourth quarter. That's when Miami opens the floodgates. Right, San Antonio with major players on the bench. Right, Tim Duncan, for example, on the bench for a stretch of the fourth quarter, gets outscored by 11 points in that fourth quarter. San Antonio only scores 17 points in the fourth quarter. So don't be fooled by the 109-93 score. This game was actually competitive well into the fourth quarter. In my opinion, when you add up all of these numbers, and when you realize that, of course, the Spurs could have played much more aggressive defense, understand Tony Parker had no personal fouls, Tiago Splitter only had one personal foul, Cowie Leonard only had two personal fouls, Tim Duncan only had two personal fouls, you know, the Spurs definitely could have ratcheted up the intensity. Then you realize that the Spurs have a lot of room for improvement in Game 5 with their backs against the wall facing essentially an elimination game. I'm expecting the Spurs to answer the call. I like the Spurs in Game 5. I believe they had an off night in Game 4 and I believe, quite frankly, the Miami Heat did things in Game 4. Low turnovers, 52.9% a shooting percentage, that they won't be able to repeat in game five. Let me also say this too. How bad an off night did the San Antonio Spurs have? Close your eyes for a second and just think about how many rebounds Tim Duncan had in game four. How many do you think they were? Let's say he had an off night. Think he had eight boards, think he had nine boards. Tim Duncan in 32 minutes and 59 seconds, in other words, practically 33 minutes, only had five rebounds the entire game. Five. Let me point out, too, the center, Tiago Splitter, only had three, right? By the way, when Tim Duncan was on the floor, the Spurs were only outscored by four points, right? That's with Duncan having a less than exemplary game. I'm expecting Tim Duncan to lift his game. I'm expecting the Spur bench to lift its game. It's possible that Manu Ginobili might not bounce back in this series, right? He was a minus 22 off the bench for San Antonio. That's distinctly possible, but people need to realize that the Spurs have a very deep bench, right? Gary Neal, of course, having a decent series. Boris Diaw was actually a plus three off the bench, right? In my opinion, the Spurs have enough depth to offset perhaps a declining Manu Ginobili. My pick here for the reason stated, is to take the San Antonio Spurs in Game 5. Understand, as I said earlier, neither team has won two games in a row this entire series. And after Miami's outlier performance in Game 4, I believe it's only natural 
that they're going to exhale a little bit. And also for all the hype about the big three, understand that when Dwayne Wade was on the court, the Heat only outscored the Spurs by five points. Right? Food for thought. Also, how ridiculous was the game? Dwayne Wade, in 39 minutes and 55 seconds, had no turnovers. That's not going to be the case in Game 5. I like the Spurs here. I think they're compelling value. You should get better than even money as they are listed in Vegas as an underdog. I like the Spurs to win Game 5 of the NBA Championship outright. Let us know what you think. Keep in mind, people will be able to read your comments here online. If you have special insider information or insight, I hope you list it here. Also, don't limit yourself to Game 5 of the NBA Finals. If there's a sporting event out there that you feel can give our community here on YouTube, our uh, community here at DwyerVIP.com, an upper hand, then pass along that sports advice. Thanks for stopping by.